So, topic three. Yes. Moving on. Yep. You want to go topic sure, three? Sure. I'll, I'll do topic three because uh, there, there's a little little more behind this. Uh, so, we went to E3 last year, right? Yep. That we first, did. Tri- first trip to E3. I oh, made trip. So well fun. worth it. Um, you know, we went only because of Zelda, and it ended up being amazing. Oh, yeah. Um, expensive. Unplanned expenses, which sucked. Yeah. But amazing. It's just, we'll, we'll, we'll you know, if we ever go again, guy, make sure we go through a better trip. Yeah. Trip planning place, yeah. Um, yeah. To make sure that we or, know what all the costs are. Or for sure guarantee that. Yeah. Yeah. It, we, yeah. It's something that I, I think if I go again, I might, I might get a travel advisor in on it. Um, yeah. I'll take my parents' yeah. travel advisor. Yeah. True. True. To, true. Try to um, make sure that we know what all the costs are up front before we go. But yeah. that's besides the point. Um, that's not E3's fault that we had to make travel arrangements. It happens in LA. It's just where it is. Um, so E3 is doing something that it's never done before. Um, at least never done like this. And they say, at least E3 is claiming that it is now going to be open to the public this year. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, like open to the public. It's always been a media event. Yeah. Uh, or or a, an event masked as a media event because it's, it's not that hard to get a media badge. I, I'm just saying that, like, this isn't any offense to the group at ESA. Um, and I don't necessarily want them to have stricter requirements because I don't think um, audience size... Like, if you have any sort of audience, even if it's only, like, 100 people that watch you a week, like, you should, um, you matter to those 100 people. Right, so exactly, you should, yeah. you know, my, my always concern is that people um, that get the media badges that go there just to enjoy E3, and they don't provide anything. Um, that's always bothered me. Like, yeah. Like, why get the media badge if you're not going to provide anything? Right, at right, this, definitely, definitely, event, yeah, yeah. There are so many other events you can go to where it's not as well, but, like, this event, like, I'm trying to do my job. And, you know, you, you just sit there in that line for three hours and you wonder how many of these people are, are here to do a job. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, definitely. But that's always been an open criticism. And, and maybe this is going to make me a little more critical of this. Um, but well, let me just explain what they're doing. So they are opening to, opening to the public. Um, not unlimited, of course. There's only limited tickets. No, right. Yep. But they're going to they're gonna be selling 15,000 tickets. Okay? These tickets are probably already on sale by the time you hear this podcast. Yeah, because they go on sale tomorrow, which is the day after we recorded this. So when you hear this, it would have already been on sale. Um, <laughs> Oops, sorry about that, guys. But it's okay. They're, they're <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. still at this price. Uh, those 15,000 tickets, uh, there is going to be an early adopter. So if you get in on it, I don't know if it's day one, day two. They didn't really go into the details, but obviously starting on day one, you can do it. Um, it'll be $150 to get a ticket to go. Um, and then obviously later on, I don't know if it'll be at the... I don't know if it'll be closer to June or if it'll be like at the door. If they haven't sold the tickets, you can walk up literally the day, like during E3 and buy a ticket. Right. Um, those will be two hundred and fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. So, one, um, this is going to make E3 more relevant uh, than it already is, which is crazy because it's right. already the biggest gaming show in the world oh, in terms yeah. of. Um, I don't want to say in terms of viewership per se, but in terms of announcements. Yeah. Um, this is the one of their press conferences, like all the big people show up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, or most of them. I mean, there was booths on top of booths on top of booths. It was, yeah. it was and crazy. And this happens at like Gamescom and Tokyo Game Show. Like, like those have more attendees, uh, but they don't seem to garner as much attention because there's not as many new announcements. Like mm-hmm. E3 is like, it's like a party. People take off for E3 so yeah. they can watch live streams for a week. Oh yeah. Um, so it's, it, you know, they're, they're opening up to the public to 15,000 people, which for me as a media member, Sucks in some ways because some of the lines are already impossibly long. Right. Um, but I also think this is almost a change E3 needed to do. And this isn't speaking as someone who's attending it. Because I, you know, we went one time. We don't have the decade of experience. Right, how, yeah. How awesome E3 used to be compared to what it is now. Right, I, yep. I've yep. heard it's been scaled back. Like what we saw with Zelda, what we saw with like the Mafia 3 booth. Yep. Um, like apparently... That used to be a norm, and now barely anybody goes all out like that. And I understand why it's expensive, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> so a big a big reason is obviously that it's expensive to build those booths. It's also expensive for those people to be there, um, and that the ESA group that runs it wasn't necessarily um, viewing it as something that was extremely beneficial. And um, every other event out there, even when it's advertised as a media event like Gamescom, you can get a media badge for it. It's still open to the public. Public can still buy tickets and go if they yep. want to go. Yep. Um, E3 was like the last one not doing it. So they're doing it now. Whether 15000 is is enough or whether that's a good number, I don't know. Maybe it's conservative. 
They're, yeah. you know, they're well, trying, and it's their first year, I so mean, it's, it's their first year doing it. They, they, you know, as an example, what's what what I hate about that, what about this is that just imagining that there was fifteen thousand more people there. Well, that's saying that they don't the cut back year. some of the other stuff, though, too. Well, they cut back what? I, I yeah, I would hate to say media credentials, but you never know. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think yeah. they're gonna do that. Um, well, 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 there's the a couple is, other different, is, different we'll, types we'll of see, credentials we'll too, aren't there? What? There's a couple different other types of yeah. There's uh, too. no, they're, they're exhibit. Exhibitors. Okay. Okay. So it was just the exhibitors and media, basically, yeah. in a way. Yeah, um, there was okay. So let me explain. Public has actually always been able to attend E3. Um, but it really wasn't something the public was going to do because you had to pay a thousand dollars to get in. Yeah. Um. And there were like consumer badges or something. I can't remember. There was three oh, okay. different badges. Yeah, yep, yep. So yeah, the yep. media badges. We we don't we don't pay to go like to get in and do things because we're there for a job. At least that's the idea of the media badge. You're there for your job. Right. Um. You're there to cover things, and covering things helps keep E3 popular because it brings it to people who aren't there. Mm-hmm. Um. So like that's why you get in for free. Um. As I explained, it wasn't. It's not for. We live in Wisconsin, so like it's thousands of dollars for us to make that contract. Right. But anyway, so it's appreciative. We don't have to spend any extra for our tickets. Uh, there's exhibitor ones, which I also assume are probably free because they're the people that work at companies that are at E3 presenting something. Right. Whether it's at yeah. a booth, whether it's in a meeting room. Uh, either that or whatever. I'm guessing the company pays for it. Yeah. Or they some, a, somewhere. They, in. they have a game, you know, there. And so the whole development team gets, gets a pass, even though they're not doing anything but playing other people's games. Right. It is what it is. It's a kind of a perk of you paid money to have your game here. Right. Yeah. So have it. Have better. You're going to be able to yeah. go enjoy the show. Um, so... We saw that, and we like we didn't realize the perks of our media badges until like the final day that we didn't. Yeah. We could have been yeah. in the front of the lines every time. Yeah. Um. And I assume even with the public badges, that's still gonna be true. Media are gonna be able to walk in early. Right. Yeah. Um. Because, again, media are there to do a job, and you know maybe we have interviews set up, maybe we have, uh, you know maybe we don't, but we want to get that hands-on experience and get all the footage and all that stuff, and like it's easier to do that when you're in there early and can get prepared. Like now, I have a stand for a camera, so if, you know if I get this time. I don't have to worry about you holding it. I can get right. everything set up or like, a, right away. Or an E3 member holding it yeah. and, and yeah. not doing it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, making it our job much more difficult, which, again, not their fault. Should have planned better ahead. But uh, I like that they're opening it to the public uh, just at a level because based on what I have heard, E3 has been kind of losing a little relevance. And this past E3, they did something... Uh, I think it was EA who might have sponsored it or something. Um, there was an outdoor event for it that was public. Oh, yep. Yep, it was EA. Yep. Yep. Um, so you couldn't, like, public people couldn't go to the show floor, but they could go to this public event, which was separate from it. And the weird thing, about, at least the weird thing to me about this public event, is there were some demos at that event that weren't on the show floor. Right. So it was like, even as a media person, like, oh, i got to go to that event. Yeah, we get into it with our media passes. But um, it it was weird. Yeah, it, it, it almost really like there was, was two yeah. separate events. Yep. Um, we can attend both of them. There's not really a lot of direction on where to go for it. No, there's not. And not a lot of signs. And then you have. Oh, and then even once you get to that thing, it really wasn't signed very yeah, well and then either. Like public, you know, I'm sure they had to pay money for a pass or whatever. I don't know because I didn't look into it. Right. But um, they could go to it, uh, but they couldn't come back to the show. It was. It was just it was really strange. Um, and I almost feel like. That must have been a big enough success that they're like, we need to open the doors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, media will still get early access, but we need to open the doors to the public and let them in because ultimately, what does E3 serve? Customers. Right. Like, it is a tech, a tech show, a video game show, to um, sell things to people. And the easiest way to get them to sell is let them in. Yeah. Um, and... Hundred fifty dollars a pop. I don't. Even, I haven't done the math. That's a, it, that's a that's a lot of money they can make. Well, like, right. They're right. not going to sell all fifteen thousand at one fifty. But I mean, even if they did, and it wasn't, it didn't hit the two fifty mark. They just all sold on day one. Like, yeah, fifteen thousand people bought it on that's day one. Definite possibility. Um, like that's still a lot of money, man. Oh yeah. Um, extra money going in their pockets just to let more people through the door. Yeah. Now I wonder. So one thing I do wonder, because because we don't know. They said they're going to explain more about this as it goes. I do wonder if there's going to be. Um, like, like there, there was a time, like, E3's open now from this time to this time, all yep. these days. And apparently we could have got in, you know, half hour early or whatever yeah. if we wanted. Yeah, right, right. Which we did do the, the last day. Yeah. So, you have all this stuff. 
I wonder if the public access, well, there'll be, be a lot of access to it, but they'll even have even a li- more limited, limited time. Limited time, yeah. Like, okay, like media can come can come in uh, like early and get in line, and then exhibitors and everyone else comes in at 10, and then public hits at noon. Right. So, like, you get that two-hour window. Uh, and I only say this because um, unless you have something set up ahead of time, like, like technically we didn't have to wait in line for Breath of the Wild, all, any of E3. We could have went and waited in line for, for other games if we wanted to. Yeah. Um, because we, were just we had for... a booth tour set up with Nintendo where we weren't going to have to wait. We could right. just go and play the game. Yeah. Um, but since we went on behalf of Zelda Informer, we obviously were just going to cover Zelda. Or that was the primary reason we were there. So we, like... That's what we were there. Three days in a row, we played Zelda. Oh, definitely. Every single day. I think oh, multiple times each day. Yeah. And it was amazing every time. That was what was crazy about it. Like, this game, you know, some demos are like, oh, it's just the same demo every time. Like, it's the same demo, but you're doing different things every time. Oh, yeah. Tell you. Definitely. Unless you're mean, beating Step Talus three times because we have footage issues. Um, yeah, right. Which uh, it actually upset me because I wanted to get footage of me trying to kill the Guardian, but... Yeah. Anyways. Um Sorry, I'm a little sour over something that I really... I don't know if I should be sour. I mean, I'm sour oh, yeah. over the attitude, I guess, than over yeah, anything else. Yeah. But, um, you know, it, it's... As a media member, um, last year was an anomaly where Nintendo only had one game, and it was a three-hour wait. So it's like, yeah. one game, three-hour wait, the public's there. Well, I suppose... Well, right, right and... Now. The only way I you could might, you might see... Not even get to, you might even get to play it. Well, the thing is, the, another thing I could see is actually having like a media line and a, and a public line. I don't think that will ever happen. You don't think so? No. Where, Too much of a hassle. You think? No, I, mean, I don't know. Then, then it's like, oh, so we get priority media, media will just keep going in circles. Well, it, where, I mean, you take, like, let's say you have ten people. You take eight media and two or three. Yeah, but media have the ability to do things like we did. Set up a booth tour. You don't have to wait in line. Right, but, I mean, they are there doing a job, and if they can't get into the thing to actually do their job, you know, yeah, you know, know. what I'm saying? So you know like, what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It's, it, a, it's, it's a catch-22. Yeah, um, that's what I said. Like, I, I, I know, like, you, you guys at home are like, oh, look at these two entitled, you know, people. Yeah, right, like, yeah. Like, oh, man, they just want to keep that E3. To this. Like, no, I want you guys to be able to go. Right, oh, like, definitely. E3, it was uh, fun. I... Growing up as a kid, E3 was like a dream. Oh, it definitely. Uh, when I started as Elden Informer, we used to talk, me and the old staff back in the day, about how awesome it would be if we could get into E3. And then, now uh, we've been able to get into it for a while. We've sent, Zelda Informer sent people now like five years in a row. Just never was me. Because we had, there's coverage out of the event, and we need people to cover it, so I was always back making sure we covered it. And it... It's an amazing experience that it is. I, I'm never going to forget. And I'm hoping I get to go back. Someday. Yeah, right. It's, it's, it's right. harder and harder for me as I get older because I have three kids. But, I mean, someday I, w- I would like to go. Heck, someday I would like to, you, me, and my girlfriend all go. Like, yeah. I think she would even enjoy some aspects. She has an issue right. with crowds. Yeah, um, there's that. Which, but if I get her immediate oh, so badge. so do I, but. If I get her immediate badge, we get to get yeah. in ahead of the rush and don't get trampled like I did the day one. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, and then I, when you lost your badge. I lost my badge. Like, and here's the thing. Like, you lose that immediate badge, you don't get another one. No, you don't get another badge, so, period. So, like, you leave the you pay floor, for you're done. Yeah. I got lucky and someone turned it in, but uh, turned it into the desk, thankfully. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it was someone who worked there. But um, for all, there was a scary moment on day one where I'm like, I just spent, like, thousands to be out here, and now I can't. Right. Like, this is day one. Like, this isn't day three. This is day one. Day one, I hour played, one. I played Zelda. Minute ten. Like, I'm going to get in line <laughs> to play Zelda one time, and... I'll, I'm done. I'm going to sit in a hotel room for the next few days doing what I could have did at home and, and save money. Like, it's like, left my family at home. Like, this sucks. Um, although, we threw a Dodger game does. Like, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, did, we did yeah, some fun yeah. stuff. I mean, we did. Let, we did. let me tell you, we made sure it was a fun trip to LA. We, you know, we, we did a lot of work, a lot of late nights. Oh, yeah. But podcast night, God, it was fun. It's still one of the most watched Southern Former podcasts ever. Yeah. With all of us in person. Like, it, that, was, that was a fun podcast. Uh, if you guys ever well, you know, go over to Southern Former, actually, uh, with, we, I think, as far as I'm aware, we're still posting this on the Zelda Informer YouTube channel. That's now on the Nintendo Prime channel. So if you go to our playlist for Zelda Informer, <laughs> uh, it did, it's did, really weird. Did, but basically, the Zelda Informer YouTube yeah. channel um, was handed over to me. Uh, but there's like a contract dispute now, so like maybe it's going to be handed back. I have no idea. But assuming that we still have that channel, this is where it's still published, go to the Zelda Informer uh, playlist for the podcast. Just go back to June last year. There's an excellent episode in there if you want to hear... Um, some great impressions about Breath of the Wild from people very first time playing it, not knowing all that we know today. Um, just awesome. Um, man. 
And that's with all of us fighting through traffic. Like it took us like five hours back to the hotel. Yeah, it took. And the, the sad part like, is, like an extra two. It's only what, eight miles. Yeah, yeah. Nine I'll, miles. I'll go to L.A. during rush hour. Yeah. I'm not a. Apparently, I'm not an aggressive don't driver. Don't take the interstate. Don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not an aggressive driver, so it was really hard for me to drive in L.A. Um, which yeah. I, after after driving back that day, I made him drive those stuff because he's. He's a lot more comfortable being aggressive driving than I am. Um, I can be when I have to be. I know, but you're just like you're just like cut him off, and I'm like, I can't. It's L.A. Like you have I'm to. I'm Wisconsin. Oh, I know, so am I. We but don't do that. I, I, yeah, I get that. I am but. not going to conform to crazy <laughs> California drivers. I am going to be the nice guy, which means I am going to be the guy that never makes it home. Right. Um, <laughs> anyways, that, that's just how it is in L.A. Uh, you know, the, the thing is, it wasn't, I, think, I didn't think it was going to be that bad, because, like, we arrived at, you know, like, 3 a.m. or something like that, so, like, there really wasn't that bad driving from the airport. Yeah, right, yeah. It was kind of nice, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, this is not actually that bad. Like, everyone told me about traffic. I'm like, yeah, this is nothing. Yeah, no. No, that was until we had to come back. Like, it wasn't even that bad driving there. No. It was when we had to come back. Yeah, yeah. Come back. Because well, we always, we always ended up having to turn left into our, into our hotel for some ungodly reason. Oh my God. And like the hotel, like, and I don't think it was that hotel only, like all the hotel setups, like everything is so packed in. Yeah. And just, well, oh. so, but we were just down from a stoplight. So there was mass traffic <laughs> backed up sure. in front of our hotel. And every time we had to try to turn left through it and it was just absolutely crazy. Yeah. Like, I swore one time you were going to clip that guy. Oh, no, I had plenty of room. You have plenty of room. Plenty of room. Yeah. yeah. Plenty of room. Like, literally, I don't know if I can fit a piece of paper in between. That's oh, no, there was plenty of room. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> uh, like, I, th- I thought for sure it was an accident. I'm like, and the thing is, there's a rental car, so it's like, oh, great. I mean, that's why we do have the rental insurance on the car, so, like, maybe yeah. I wouldn't have been screwed, but it still felt like I would have been screwed. <laughs> more paperwork. And, anyways, I definitely wouldn't have got the deposit back, which... I don't, still don't even know if I ever got that back. Yeah, right. Honest. Yeah. Right. Uh, I just know the car cost. It, it ended up being like seven hundred by the end. Yeah. It was, it was ridiculous. Uh, anyways, so E three is open to the public. I, I guess setting aside my, my me not wanting to wait in even longer lines. Right. Um, I think it's actually a really cool thing, and I, think, I do too. I think uh, if you're a media member out there that maybe is like, oh man, like. Is it worth going to E3 now? Like, if you're like me, like it's gonna cost a lot of money, and you're gonna to have to wait in really, really long lines, and you might not get all the coverage you want. Be more proactive about setting, but taking advantage of the factory media. I worked at Zelda right. Informer, a relatively, you know, it, it, it's it's a decent sized site out there, but a relatively small site traffic wise, and um, I was able to easily set up a booth tour with Nintendo, which includes playing whatever games you wanted to play. And I think if you know, you're working. At any other publication that covers other types of games, like, you know, say you cover Sony stuff or EA yeah. or you know whatever, Microsoft I'm sure whatever with contacts Xbox. you can get with them, we're well, glad they do the same thing. Oh, I'm sure. Like there's a lot. There was a lot it's... of private areas there that you would see media members coming in and out of. Um, so, just you just gotta be more proactive. Um, you you might not get the interviews like we didn't get any interviews, but you could still get access to the stuff without the lines. Uh, so it's just something to keep in mind. Um, and, you know, honestly, if you've gone to any other event like oh. PAX and stuff like that's how it kind of works there, too. So just I think my biggest thing is, is ask questions. Do yeah. not be afraid to yes. ask questions. Don't be, and I was afraid. Yeah. Because I'm like, I don't want to sound stupid. Right. Like, it's okay to sound stupid. Especially if it's your first time there. Like, yeah, heck, okay. even if it's your hundredth time there, ask questions. Um, so, like, now that's open to the public and you're not paying $1,000, you're actually paying a price that's somewhat affordable. The yeah. price of and, one and like an NFL football game. The other thing with three day event. is, I'm wondering, is that a th- full three day of event no pass or is it, no, no. Or is it a re- $150 day? They have not day? revealed all the information. Yeah, that could be that could be another thing I'm too. assuming it's, it's a three day pass. I, you but, know, I don't know because at the same point in time, you'd figure it'd be better for them if they did it just as a one day pass. You'd figure. Yeah, but I don't know. But there's right. also that hype of, well, you buy a three day pass. I'm, I'm sure you probably can. But I don't know. Right. We, again, we don't again, know. Yeah. EA has is basically, or EA, ESA has just said this is the thing they're doing. And the thing is, it starts to sale tomorrow, so all the details are going to be coming out. But you guys are probably going to know more about it than we do right now. Because um, obviously, you're not going to buy something not knowing if it's a one day or three day pass. Like, you're going to know when right. you buy it. Uh, so, yeah, that's. I don't know. I, I think this is good overall because E3 was shrinking, and with. Now that publishers and companies know 
there's a fresh injection of 15,000 people from the public coming that they want to impress, they're going to come back. They're going to come back strong. And I think we're going to see that this is going to, because there are not so much in the, Nintendo was in like the west part, not so much in the west wing area. That was pretty packed because that's like where Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. Right, yeah. So like there were other big companies in there, but it didn't feel like there was a lot of extra space. The one wing, however, yeah, there was a lot of extra space in it. Where right. Mafia Three was, and yeah, uh, and that, the basketball not in thing. that area, but off to the back side of yeah, the, like the back there was side a of lot it. of empty space. Yeah, and even some of the booths that were they kind of had scattered out a little bit back. They're like, not really that great. No, um, you know, you, you could see why there was no reason people were really going back there, and so like there's a lot of space left for more companies to get involved. So I think, um, I, I think that's the hope. They bring this in, ESA makes all the money off the ticket sales, and it entices companies to revalue it again. Because I think that's a, a criticism that some of the companies that skip E3 is like, why are we going to E3 when our customers aren't there? Right. Yeah. We can go interact with them directly at PAX. We can go interact with them directly at Tokyo Game Show or yeah. Gamescom. So yep, this yep. is like ESA's answer. Be like, look, we'll let 15000 in. Yeah. Definitely. It's a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Word of mouth. You're going to get it out if you show up here. Um, so I think this is a healthy thing for E3. I personally, I'm gonna dread it next time I go. Oh, definitely. But <laughs> well, again, 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 future plans like it, like like a booth tour. You know, I'm gonna have to clarify: does that booth tour include a, a demo of every single Nintendo game? Right. Or am I only gonna get to play one? Right. And I'm only gonna get to play one. Do I get to choose which one it is. Mm-hmm. So I know what I have to get in line for. Do I, you know? Like you're just gonna have to do a lot more planning, um, and hopefully, 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 I can get Nintendo just to fly me out there. That'd be nice. Wouldn't that be nice? Yes, it would be. Um, also, you got to keep in mind though too, in future planning, this is their first year, so I think it is going to be kind of a a cluster and a learning year. Yeah. But I think as the years go on, if they keep doing this, I, I think it, they'll eventually find a way to streamline it, and yep. you won't even notice. Yeah, and as I said, the idea is to make it worthwhile. Right. Um. To to make companies want to show up, since less and less companies have been showing up. 